Hello everyone, welcome back. Right, okay, um, the 1st of December sees the release of Steve Broad's new game, Cygnus Alpha, um, which he's been uh, writing for three years now. Um, the sort of background to it is that um, in 2017 he released his um, excellent um, uh, Horace game, uh, Merry Christmas Horace, and um, out of the blue before the release of that, he invited myself and Vil Lord Such to um, help playtest it, um, which was a, a privilege because it was really quite a fun game, and we managed to um, get him to the point where the game was um, tested uh, enough for it to be released. And then afterwards, it um, it got a very good uh, reception from the uh, the community. Um, his discussions turned to. Uh, his next project now um he asked us both for any kind of ideas that we might have had uh, in relation to that initially um horace themed um steve is a a big fan of the, the horace character um but then eventually he decided he'd like to do something completely different because i think merry christmas from horace was game number five or six of his um featuring uh, the character so he decided that he'd like to try something different, and one of his favourite games uh, back in the day uh, was Timegate by John Hollis. And he decided he'd very much like to do a game uh, in that vein. So we had um, many um, sort of brainstorming sessions over Facebook Messenger about um, this game, what to sort of do in it, how, um, what the plot would be, etc., what it would be called. Um, and eventually we got to the point that... Um, after three years of coding, um, it's finally ready, uh, just about to be uh, released for the 128K ZX Spectrum. Remember that, it must be 128K when you try and uh, load it up. As you can see, it's got a fantastic loading screen designed by the one and only um, Andy Green, who has done some fantastic uh, work, uh, not just reimaginings of classic screens, but also screens for many many homebrew releases um that have come out over the last couple of years you may remember that i did uh, a review of his pixel art book um better late than never last year which is a fantastic sort of uh, compendium of all his work so far as history etc he's designed all the uh, the in-game look of the consoles um the aliens etc that you encounter in this david sapphire has uh, produced the title track um He's done some fantastic soundtracks for, for games over the years as well. Um, special thanks go to Simon Brattle, who has allowed Steve to use his Zeus um, utility in uh, in order to present the game, uh, sorry, to complete the game. And also um, John Hollis, the designer of the original uh, Timegate, has kindly allowed um, permission for... Uh, the game to be used as inspiration now what it is it's kind of a space stroke um, shoot 'em up stroke uh, trading uh, game the plot is that the Cygnus Alpha is a ship that sort of like has attained legendary status because it was carrying a valuable cargo and it eventually disappeared but um, uh, over the, the sort of course of time um, sort of rumors etc as to its possible location had sprung up, um, creating a mass um, rush for the goodies contained therein. And it's a cross between space trading, space shooting, um, etc. So I'm just going to give you a very, very quick look at the game, an overview of some of the controls. It's by no means um, particularly in-depth. It's just to show you what the game's like so that you can make a decision whether or not you want to buy it. It is completely free to download. Um, on the 1st of December, I will put a link uh, in to download the game. So as you can see, we're in Spectaculator. We have the Cygnus Alpha loading screen there. Absolutely fantastic. We are aware that um, Cygnus Alpha um, is the name of something that um, uh, appears in Blake 7. We weren't aware of that at the time um, when we came up with the name. But um, since we have become aware... Um, you know, we, we decided to, to keep the name because we really like it. But yes, there is a, um, a Cygnus Alpha that's gone before in the Blake 7 television series. Now, I'm not familiar with Blake 7. I believe Cygnus Alpha was the name of a prison planet um, in our game, or sorry, in Steve's game. It's the name of a ship. So let's press enter to get going. And we get this kind of intro. So as you can see, this is free. 
Um, he doesn't want uh, anyone to have paid money for this game. Oh, that coffee is really strong. Ah. So let's press enter. Um, when you get the download file, and here we hear the uh, the excellent loading music. Let's just try and turn the volume up on that. If yeah, that is a hundred percent. So fantastic uh, loading music there. Now, um, as you can see, you need to select one to five to start the game. The controls are six and seven for up and down, eight and nine for left and right, and zero for fire. A to pull up your service info screen. S for your target insights. H to pause and D to resume. Escape to abort. J for hyperspeed. L is your sector select, M is to mute your warning alarms, and P is to land on the planet. So, I've had a, a little brief sort of play on this. Now, I'm not going to do this as a review because I, I think it's, um, uh, obviously I've got a kind of bias uh, having been involved in, in some of the ideas, etc. So I'm just going to present you some sort of um, brief gameplay, and then if you decide that you like what you see, by all means sort of like download it um, when it comes out. So I'm going to press 1. just put the view on full screen sorry and here we are so first we have the um, the, the ship is firing itself up and you can see Andy Green's done all of this design here uh, the console etc and the computer now the bottom left hand side of the screen um, is the uh, operations computer if I press A, it will bring up my sort of diagnostics, how much money I've got, what my reputation is. Zargon 3, which is kind of like the life support um, stuff. Our temperature. And if I go to uh, uh, press B or N, I can get um, the next sort of screen on this. Showing an overview of the uh, like a systems diagnostics uh, thingamajig. I press A again, and that brings me out onto the star field. S turns my target insights on and off. One to five is my speed level. If I go to, if I press one, you can see I'm now going at full speed. This will, of course, drain your power quite quickly. So speed two, 75% power. Speed three, 50% of power. Speed four, 25% of power. And speed five, um, really kind of quite slow. Now, if I press L, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner the various different sectors that I can jump to. Ones with icons on such as that means that there's people there that I could potentially trade with, or they might also be enemies. You never really quite know. So let's press J to hyperspace to this sector. Nice little effect there. So we've got an alien sort of wheeze in the view there. Now what are they going to do? Right, we can see he's got, our ship has detected he's got a torpedo loaded. I'm using my controls to, so I want to put on my, oh no, wrong key. Put on my target in sights just in case. Because this might be a hostile. Now you get that kind of uh, sort of alarm when the alien is in your sights. And there we go, I've taken them out. So they didn't want to trade because they had their torpedoes. Well, they might have wanted to trade, but a bit late if they did because I've just blown them out of the sky. Now, um, you can, of course, take damage during all your encounters, etc. So what you can do, press in the level uh, sector select um, and you see things moving around in the left-hand screen. 
I can either go to a planet and um, go and sort of like take some of the resources from them or I can land on a repair planet so let's go and see what the planet um, looks like now I've gone there I'm gonna press P to land on the planet and here we are I must admit I find this a little bit because I've only just started playing the game a little bit um, tricky at the moment So there I'm collecting uh, goodies. And if I want to come back off the planet, I can just go up to the top of the screen. Now, I'm back up in outer space. And you can see, according to the, um, the HUD down there, that... Oh, no, it's fixed itself. Right, okay. Occasionally, the computer goes wobbly and won't be able to perform any of the, the functions that um, you want it to. So we've got buzzers um, around here somewhere. Now, are they goodies or are they baddies? We don't know. Let's just lower our um, speed there so we're down to 25% power. and see whether the bazaars hove into view. Here they are. Now, are they going to let me trade with them or not? Yes, they are. Oh, no, they're not. Not yet. Got the wrong thing. I said press the wrong button there. Whoops. No, they're, they're bad boys. So we want to get rid of them sharpish. So I've destroyed those. Now you can see I've taken a bit of a, a beat in there. If I wanted to go and make some repairs, going through my level selector screen, I need to find a sector that's got a lone planet like that and then hyperspace to it. Then I can go down, land, and you can see it's going to cost me 10,000, which I have, to have a full service. So let's have that. And then back to our sector select screen and let's go there. You can see as Argon 3 is now full, we've got the Coes coming in here. Now what are they going to want to do? Are they going to want to fight or do they want to flog me some stuff? Here we go. We are open to trade. Let's buy something off them. Uh, what should we go for? Let's go for some food. Uh, we'll have that squiggly thing. And you can see the stuff's being transferred across to us now. Now, obviously, um, reputation can either go up or down depending on which way you choose to take these encounters sometimes as we've already seen the aliens are hostile from the start but basically um, there's you know um, you're encouraged to explore and have a look around and play the game exactly the, the way you want to and like I said if you are a coder oh I've got a warning uh, going up there don't know what's going to go on there if you are a coder and you like to tinker about with uh, programs and stuff, then by all means, um, let's... Oh! No, we'll have a... We're not having that off you lot. Get out of it.
yeah um th there's an encouragement to tinker with things um if you wish to to improve things that w whatever you might um want to but that is a very very brief look at cygnus alpha and um how to uh, sort of play it because it might be a little bit tricky particularly if you're not used to time gate at all but it's a really um nice little game a really uh fun project to have been a part of um and yeah it's out on the first of december so i would encourage you if this is the kind of game that you like to um to um give it a go because you know we should support people who um you know do this for a hobby um in and around uh, their their sort of like daily lives you know steve's got a family he's got work etc not getting paid for for this at all this has been really kind of like a labor of love for him and finally three years after its inception it's at a point where it's ready for release so yeah very very quick look at um cygnus alpha for you um just so that you could um, see if it was something that you liked. Uh, let's just close Spectaculator down. And I hope that you enjoyed that. If you like the video, please let me know. If you wish to subscribe, please do so. But if you do subscribe, please, please, please take the time to join in the conversation. That's what it's all about.